The STC Hunter Turbo has been released for over a year now and it's offering itself to be a natural upgraded replacement to the GT3251B journal bearing turbocharger which had been released over five years ago and is now being rebazzed as the new evolution of the ultimate response monster. This is an exciting time for those in the four, six, and eight cylinder categories that are using a gasoline application with both pump gas and race gas fuels. This turbocharger fits within the same class as the GT3071R cast wheel up to the GTX 3067R series turbochargers, except this is in an actual journal bearing package and a much more affordable price. A dual ball bearing cartridge package is available for an additional charge. As usual, we'll go through all of our points of engine size application that this fits, the purpose of the turbo, the power level and characteristics, its effective boost pressure and RPM ranges for various engine applications, the composition of the turbo, specs, and drawbacks for the turbocharger in case there are some issues that some people may find as a concern as to whether or not this is the right turbo for them. For the engine size application, this fits best with the 1.6 to 2.5 liter category for the four cylinder engine market. For the six cylinder, both V6 and inline configurations, this is best for 2.5 to 3.7 liter applications. For the V8 applications, this expounds even further from the 4 liter all the way up to 6.2 liter applications. Both the V6, inline 6, and the V8 categories should be using this particular turbocharger in a twin set and not individually. The purpose of the turbocharger is to blend the design and development of Speedtrap Consulting's forged aluminum billet wheel with the reliability, usability, and utility that's only found in Garrett Honeywell turbochargers. It's also to be able to take what was used with the GT3251B and expound it in terms of more torque and a bit more upper end horsepower than its predecessor. It still remains to be in a great compact package and is a direct replacement for many turbo kits and setups that are using a standard T3, T4 configuration. Power level and characteristics for this particular turbo are really set between the 300 wheel horsepower to 460 wheel horsepower range. This is where the so-called sweet spot would be. For the four cylinder applications, they can actually reach 460 wheel horsepower provided that they have a good flowing high volumetric efficiency cylinder head and tend to use higher RPMs and in some cases use an aftermarket camshaft as well as possibly use of the standard camshaft. For the six cylinder V6 and inline six applications as a twin set, together these can make about 800 wheel horsepower. For the eight cylinder applications that's also using for a twin set, this could actually expand a little bit more to 850 wheel horsepower because of the fact of its additional displacement and additional size of the exhaust pulse widths that are available coming from the engine. For the effective ranges, we can look at the boost pressure level as well as the RPM matches. Please understand that a lot of these are generalizations in terms of the RPM range that's going to be matched with its boots pressure level. This does not necessarily mean that this is going to be exactly how it's going to fit for your application, but it does give you an idea in terms of where you would lie and to understand whether or not the turbocharger is fitting within the right area for yourself. For the four cylinder application, the effective boost pressure range is from 9 psi to about 25 psi, with an RPM range of about 2500 to 8500 RPMs on average. For the six cylinder category, be it V6 or an inline six as a twin set, boost pressure range is going to go from 7 psi to about 20 psi, and then with an effective RPM range of 2200 to 7800 RPMs. For the eight cylinder category, this actually shifts down to the six psi up to 18 psi, with an effective RPM level range of about 2100 RPMs all the way up to 6800 RPMs. It's a very versatile and diversified turbocharger that can fit a variety of configurations and still fit neatly within many turbo kits and packages. The best way to be able to show that is to, for its particular composition. Just like with the GT3251B and the Silver Surfer, the composition is with a full Garrett cartridge and housings from the compressor cover, center section cartridge, and turbine housing, including the turbine wheel and shaft. All the internals are full Garrett composition. The difference is of course going to be this particular compressor wheel which is made of T6 7075 forged aluminum that is able to be able to take about 53 pounds per minute in a six blade splitter blade configuration. The compressor cover coatings here are an additional option for an additional charge for that 
easily comes either in a natural finish or center in black. For the turbine side, it's still going to use the standard nickel iron turbine that's used in many Garrett turbochargers. That's going to have a standard T3 flange with a 4 bolt 2.5 inch T31 housing setup. This can come in a configuration of either 0.48, 0.63, or 0.82 ARs. For the cartridge itself, you have an option of either a journal bearing cartridge, which is going to be water cooled optional for the journal bearing, or ball bearing in which the water fittings are going to be required. It does come with a nice billet sized back plate, six bolt configuration for easy removal, and it's very compact in size. For specifications, these are about 53 pounds per minute for the compressor wheel in a T04B compressor cover using a 3 inch OD inlet, 2.75 ID, and extrude hone ported compressor cover. The cartridge in a journal bearing configuration uses 3 8 NPT water fittings that are optional, while it uses a 1 8 NPT feed fitting. We do recommend that anything that's over 50 pounds of oil pressure at the feed line use a restrictor of 0.060 thousandths or 0.65 thousandths restrictor fitting for this. We do recommend that you not use any type of restrictor plates or other apparatuses that do not deliver pressurized oils into the oil galleys. You could actually be able to starve the turbo that way even if you think that the feed fitting is working for you. For the ball bearing configuration, they share many of the same components that's used in the ball bearing configurations in the GTR and GTX series. For example, for the ball bearing series, this is going to use a 7 16 by 24 30 thousandths restrictor, just like they would in the GTR and GTX series. Same goes with the water fittings. Instead of 3 8 NPT, you're going to go to a 14 millimeter size water fitting. The difference is going to be the return. The return flange is a standard T3 T04E return flange that's going to be used with a dash 10 AN line just like you would with many of the other general bearing turbochargers that are out on the market. For the turbine housing specifically, they come standard in ball bearing or general bearing form in a T31 T3 flange 2.5 inch 4 bolt. A Ford style 5 bolt housing is available for an additional charge with an option of 4 8, 6 3 and 8 2 AR configurations. The turbine wheel is 65 millimeter wheel diameter. What are some drawbacks? Some drawbacks that can be included are the fact that first, the compressor cover does not come into a ported shroud like the GTX 28R series. It's a standard T04B just like with the GT3251B 250 b and the Silver Surfer. There also aren't any other choices when it comes to different turbine housings. Right now we're using the standard T3 turbine housing and a nickel cast iron using only the bolts upon flanges. Please see our videos regarding our 2.5 inch V-band conversion flanges that also might be able to fit this application for your particular needs. There's no V-band entry at this time or V-band outlet but there are going to be some things in terms which we're going to be working on soon. Thank you again of course. Happy boosting.